Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're consuming this broadcast. Thank you for tuning into Ionisms, a podcast about society, art, entertainment, culture, pets, a little bit of geopolitics and cricket and of course, movies. My name is Ayan and I am going to walk you through Mr. Vishal Bhardwaj's latest offering, Uvdia. Bear in mind, a couple of things to keep in mind before you listen to the entire podcast. First up, there is no ratings in the end, so I can't ask you to skip to the good part and see what the rating is. There is no rating. Number two, uh, I do not give away the details of the story, you know, sequence by sequence, and it's not explaining the story to you. So there is none of that going to happen. Then what do I talk about? I talk about it as a movie, as a package, as a product, as a creative offering, as a whole. We talk about acting, we talk about the sound design, uh, costume design, uh, technical aspects, cinematography, editing, uh, mixing, and so on and so forth. We also talk about lit or reference to context uh, from a cinematic standpoint. The questions basically, or the answers to questions that I'm looking to explore is, does it increase, elevate the level of artistry? Does it present something which is memorable? Does it make you, does it make it a compelling watch? Is it something that is cinematically brilliant? And I'll define what constitutes brilliance because art is so difficult to rate, categorize, quantify, but cinematically with a reference to context. But to be on the safe side, it's very difficult to talk in such depth and detail without giving away some spoilers in some shape, size or form. So here's a fair warning for all those people who have not watched Kufia. Please, please hit the pause button, go watch it, and then resume the podcast from this point onwards. Uh, straight off the bat, it is a one-time watch for sure. So make no mistake about it, especially if you are a Vishal Bhardwaj fan. Mr. Vishal Bhardwaj rarely or never has done bad work. So that's straight off the bat. So again, fair warning. There will be, expect some kind of spoilers and giveaways, but not storyline in detail. So hit the pause button now. Okay, let's quickly um, jump in. And I have this other screen here where I'm looking at the details so that I don't miss out on the points. First up, I'm looking at the runtime, 2 hours 37 minutes. Now, is it a movie that is uh, fitting for 2 hours 37 minutes? Answer is no. To my mind, it could have probably ended at the 2 hour 20 minute, 2 hour 15 minute mark and I'll explain why. There are at least three sequences which even if you took them out, the whole story would still stand on the pillars. That's number one. Number two, then you snip out some of the good to have scenes, long shots and all that and you know fade it, have a crossfade and all that and you could com compact it. But that also, if you take a step back, it then asks or begs the question, what kind of movie is this? On IMDb, it is defined as action biography crime. It is based on a book with real incidents. So what are the, what's the audience that views this, right? They will have three different or four different views to this. The largest chunk of the audience Mr. Bhardwaj will encounter are those who have not read the book have little understanding of the intelligence community or, and very little understanding of the history that happened. So they will watch it slash view it as a standalone movie cinematically. Okay, this is just a one-off movie, thriller movie. So uh, what is what will that audience react as or react to? The first thing that will mislead me is the title itself, Khufia. Khufia aka secret means a secret. And so you, you then wonder, there will be a reveal, like a payoff, like, oh, this is the secret. Turns out there is no such secret. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. There is no that kind of secret. Then you slowly begin to scale back and realize, oh, there could be another layer to secrets. It could be internal secret. It could be something that I feel within and keep it a secret. I have to keep the entire events a secret. Yeah, justifies. but. The preconditioning, and probably not Mr. Vishal Bhardwaj's fault, the preconditioning that we have is that, oh, when you say it's a secret, then we are thinking departed. We are thinking, like, you know, 
shades of departed you have uh, shades of born identity in somewhere and you know when i think of great and you wanted to do a slow burn thriller so yeah, i go back to movies like uh, gary oldman's tinker taylor soldier spy if you haven't seen it strongly recommend slow burn it just keeps growing keeps growing and you need a lot of patience to get used to the pacing um or or even if you think go a little back um, la confidential again these are not similar stories nothing on those but the mood the texture the feeling is, is so so if you wanted to show this as this who done it where done it why done it then the story in act 1 act 2 largely differs in act 3 so you so for the like going back to the audience who has zero clue of the book the actual happenings in the intelligence community and some of the prerequisite knowledge which the indian audience largely is spoon fed now very recent example was janeja uh, sujay ghosh's um, again a quirky thriller i might call it that which could have ended at the right point but then they have an exposition bit of 10 minutes explaining why that happened it completely con contradicted the intelligence of the movie and so my first question to mr bhardwaj if at all you ever get to listen to this is is that what you wanted to communicate to this section of the audience or were you just making the movie the way you thought you should make and it would then land at different levels of liking to the different audiences and it's a very tough decision to make you want to stay true to the story your creative intellect and ability saying that i want to do this and some people will like it and some people won't that's always the case and then therefore can you make such a brilliant artistic movie which is which transcends all the audience types you know given the fact that india 60% of the population is below the age of 30 some 25 is below the age of say 25 or lesser if that is the largest chunk of the audience viewing this they might have a very different response and reaction so when somebody like me who is responding to this movie what kind of critique or critique hat should one wear the mass consensus the slightly more informed that's the next layer the slightly more informed layer being well i understand movies cinematically i have a fair uh, repertoire of understanding diverse movie making i understand the technical concepts uh, i have a reasonably decent understanding of the intelligence community and how they function the next layer is of those who have a deep understanding of the geopolitical space what's happening what's not happening and then the smallest audience will be those who actually have lived that life that's the smallest who will probably relate or slash absolutely not relate to the the story right so these are the broad four sections so when when i see some of the reviews online i often like to ask all the reviewers and critics or you know how are you reviewing this what hat what lens are you wearing so i'm going to therefore my assessment is on these four layers so i explain the first layer the second layer is of those set of people where who are reasonably well informed so the way they would and i probably categorize myself around the second and the third layer in the sense i have had a long deep uh viewing history of espionage thrillers and understand it from a technical standpoint as well from a film design standpoint uh, and also have a little outsider understanding of the geopolitical happenings and what the intelligence community in india and geo whatever that is available online right there is no in personal connection or anything so from that point what am i trying to gauge is this real is it believable is it authentic enough well the response was hmm act one act two yeah act three probably not and and so that's what throws the second layer set of people off the question being what did you really want to show because Sufia, we are preconditioned with that thought but then it shown it tilts towards the emotional balance or hollowness or the conflict then I, I was thinking while I was watching the movie, it could better be titled as Dwand, Dwand as in the conflict. Conflict can be external, conflict can be internal as well. So it, it would probably 
sit better with the once I saw the end product. But clearly, the creators and Mr. Badwaja's team did not have the luxury of seeing the end product. All they had is the book. So visualizing what is in the book, translating it in the mind, and then bringing it up on cellulite, very very difficult experience. So totally understand that. But I thought Dwand would have been. It's a Hindi slash Sanskrit word also. Uh, meaning conflict. So most of the movie then, when you exit the movie, it is about conflicts, internal, external, within the sphere of secrecy. So is Khufia as a title completely justified? Perhaps not. And so let's, the other part that the second layer of people will observe is the technical components of the movie. And I'll come to the acting bits as well. But from a cinematography standpoint, that is top notch. That that's completely, you know, all boxes checked. The lighting, the sequencing, the rain shots, the long shots, capturing the emotions, the eyes, the expressions, all of that. You know, the set design, shooting on the streets of Delhi. I thought were done very well. It made it believable. It made it look real, and all that. What was off-putting in that was the background score. That is so surprising to me because Mr. Bhadwaj is known to do a stellar job and has done stellar job in his previous offerings on the background score with subtlety, with undertones, with almost like haunting melodies. Um, you know, you go back to Heather, you think of some of the background score there. That's like brilliant stuff. Here, it just distracts you. And, and so I give it all the respect when I watch a movie from Mr. Bhardwaj. I want to give it the entire respect it deserves. So what do I mean by that? I have dimmed the lights. I have uh, stopped all distractions. I have put on noise cancelling headsets. And I am just watching the movie the way it is meant to be seen in complete focus. Because you want to pick up the small details, the nuances, the subtleties, attention to detail. And so here comes the dramatic, almost like theatrical noise, which almost like at, at one point I'd like, you know, you just let me just finish this scene because this music is distracting me off the screen. So very surprised at the choice of um, composition. And the whistle is good, but the whistle is also haunting. So it's like, you want to do a haunting thing? Is that the message you wanted to give? Because that's how it landed in my ears. It, it's it almost like secrecy haunting, whereas it was more of the movie turned out to be more of melancholy and emotion and conflict. It, then these two don't sit well together. I I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, even the whistle has to be appropriate to the mood, the texture of the movie. So I thought that was a little, even the teaser trailer was focusing on the espionage aspect. So you are setting up the trailer as, oh, this is going to be this deep, dark secret which happened and now it's a reveal, which when you exit the movie doesn't feel like that. It almost felt like an emotional drama that came out and not the deep, dark secret. And of course there was some. So the music, was little off putting in my in my limited understanding of cinema so forgive me if i'm offending any of mr Bhardwaj or his creative team um then if you move into the acting category let me just say i'm going to um go down the sequence i'm just reading through the imdb star cast like Ms. tabu's character with the close up shots the choice of color on the sari the name, KM, Krishna, metaphorical representation. Yep, we get that. Did it completely come out that way? I don't think so. Uh, some of the characters, some of the... And, and, so I have absolute respect and admiration for Ms. Tapu. Let me just get that disclaimer out of the way. And it's because you raise the bar so much. You raise the standard so much. Somewhere... Um, you, your expectations are spoiled for excellence. Right? Like, so does it hit the right notes in some parts? Yes. The emotional parts? Yes. But in many parts, no. It almost like 
undecided character. One can creatively argue that that's what the characters go through or the character arc goes through that indecisiveness that what do I do? How do I manage this? You know, so, so great in parts, good shots, close up shots were fantastic. The dialogue delivery, uh, understated restraint, the hollowness, uh, the sadness, it, it comes naturally to Mr. Boo's uh, character uh, and it comes out very well in the character. But uh, it all kind of takes off in, in the in the third act where it becomes a little difficult and I'll come to the third act a bit once I finish the character discussions. Um, closely followed by Mr. Ali Fazal. Uh, great uh, development from say Mirzapur and his, uh, some of the other uh, works that he has done shows a lot of promise, intensity. The earnestness is very evident in, in the character. The expressions are very uh, well captured, especially in the scenes where he breaks down, where he is, has an emotional meltdown. Those scenes are very well. The spy sequences more look need some work. You know, the spies don't are generally not very emotive. That's my stereotypical understanding of spies, you could argue. They're not very evocative. They're not emotive. They're, so it becomes like a contrast when you break down and inconsistency of the spy genre is what uh, and, and Mr. Fuzzle could always argue that the role was written in such ways I did what I was given. So those answers I don't have but as a ordinary viewer I thought that came out a little difficult. So otherwise um, he's a great actor, he's doing a fantastic job uh, in terms of choosing the right roles to display the versatility that comes across. So th that is quite evident. The, the surprise package was of course uh, Vamika Gabbi and she's been around uh, the block for some time for those who follow closely. Uh, of this year she's been in I think Jubilee and uh, Charlie Chopra and this and very different characters. Um, clearly there are two parts to her character arc. The first part is where she's this nonchalant bubbly chirpy girl and that has this cajolesque tinge to it and she has to be careful not to replicate remind people of cajol and she's on her own and so somewhere but that comes out quite well i was sold i was convinced i especially the weed scenes were like uh very enjoyable uh it came out authentic right but the backstory didn't come out as authentically but the bigger challenge was the and again spoilers if you please pause um in, in the second half or the second and third act when uh her transition from this wife doting mother to this grief stricken mother is was not very convincing the emotional scene especially in a reinsertion into the family in the united states where uh character of uh, ali fazal ravi mohan is making love to her the camera was at the right place the emotion captured in the face was fantastic but that is such a standalone beautiful moment anything before and after that especially when she's with the son the quote-unquote mamta part of it was not as evident now one can counter argue in her defense how else do you show mamta or kya current times like what do you show how do you show tough answer but it it looked that she was not very fluid with it. Uh, that there are these subtle touches and nuances that doting mothers have. Right? Like just a small touch in the shoulder, take care of the hair, you know, those small, fine touches. Somewhere I think they missed that. It it seemed a bit constructed, and therefore it contradicts fluidity when it's constructed and it it becomes. I mean, every scene is constructed, but the fluidity uh over you know covers the construction and that's when you know it's, it's a good performance so first half first part great job done convincing invested second half probably could have been better uh the bangladeshi uh, uh actor azmeri haq badhon for her limited part the bengali hindi mix to add authenticity was a bit um 
let me put it this way you could have either done bengali english complete english or complete hindi she had a strong bengali accent thick bengali accent uh, bangladeshi accent i should say uh, bangladeshi bengali accent uh, which is just sometimes like it was trilingual in the english the bengali it was like okay can you just stick to something one and then you had um, uh, km's character the mr tabu's character also switch to bengali now these are if you wanted to show authenticity versatility flexibility okay is it a show stopper no but i would have smoothened it out uh, to have some more homogeneity to it uh, it could you could argue that it would rob the flavor but it would also make the viewing that much more comfortable so uh, like i said not a show stopper she does a good job with her eyes she has very expressive eyes i think their chemistry the chemistry between tabu and uh, azmeri versus tabu and uh, vamika were very different the azmeri uh, and uh, tabu's chemistry could have been they should have just turn the heat on you know push the envelope i know it's not easy sensors this and that's what frustrates me because but sacred games one pushed the envelope and that's why it is such a mind blowing out of uh, out of syllabus for indian content and you were like pleasantly blown away with the creative choices that season made and i'm not trying to compare these two but all i'm saying is uh they could have really pushed the envelope whether it it was the peck on the cheek could have gone into this full blown kiss or it could have a proper love making scenes which would heighten the atmosphere because there was a raw passion that was being evident and it could have it could have been dive because you, you have now told me that there is the tot thriller but there is the emotional quotient but well, then dive in then don't be lukewarm waterish about it for lack of a better expression then dive into the pool deep end of the pool no holds barred that was what i thought would come out but it didn't uh, ignore all the background noise you know how it is difficult in murphy's law all this time it was quiet before i started to record the podcast now the watch goes off the dog barks the pressure cooker goes up but anyway that um and, and so um, her back story her character development could have been little better could have been little um, more tighter and her motive could have been little more stronger in fact i was also thinking what if she does, didn't have any other motive other than to make more money nothing wrong with that you know could you not have shown uh, the stereotypical i have a problem to fix this problem i am doing this okay that was i thought not that great uh so yeah so that was about their chemistry but namendra bhel lalita mohan's character she the septuagenarian character in the movie starts well delivers the uh you you get invested you believe until the second half when her alter ego comes in her alter persona comes in and it becomes a bit caricaturish uh, again i don't know if it was the writing it was the the screenplay was it a creative choice i don't know but it became caricaturish especially in the climax it was almost hilarious when it was supposed to be very serious so in the you wanted to introduce humor subtle humor dry humor in a tot thriller doesn't sit well uh, emotional drama doesn't sit well then why was that creative liberty taken or choice taken i don't know but great potential right i mean she probably would have done little more justice to the um the darkness of the character if there were little more scenes which would have shown uh, atul kulkarni shashank mehra's character man, that guy could have just exploded on the screen and done i mean i was thinking there is this big emotional scene coming but it never came I mean, credit to him for doing a guest appearance or a cameo if you will uh, he's too good an actor to be just kept on the sidelines and um, occasional you know kind of thing so but yeah um, not much that i can say um, 
and then the rest of the uh, characters. Uh, one of the things that uh, stands out, Mr. Ashish Vidyarthi stands out in the sense that it, it's become very stereotypical. I think I go back to, I think that was Sham Benegal movie, uh, Dro, D R O H, if I am not mistaken, where he plays the villain. If, um, very powerful, he's got these beautiful eyes, right? Very emo emotive, uh, beautiful eyes. Here, it's again that trope, trope kind of a character, which is, I know it's me, but so that character could have fleshed out well. And I don't think he was made to sweat. You know what I'm saying? Sweat for the role. These are those artists where they need to really go back and do some deep homework, sweat it out, and like, oh my God, I have to get my A game to work. So was it Mr. Vidyarthi's A game to work? I don't think so. And then you have other characters, ensemble characters, the Caucasian actors, uh, Alex O'Neill, David White, didn't seem very convincing as a CIA operative, um, or Rachel McLean as uh, Jan Gravison, as the diplomat, like, yeah, okay. I mean, I can't blame them the way whatever it was written is written, right? I mean, what can you do? But could have had little more, see, like, if you're a CIA operative undercover, the traditional impression that, and you can't ignore that, right? There will just too many movies with that, which have been shown, right? And so you think it will be like, uh, say, Skinner in uh, X-Files, you know, that, that kind of embodies, uh, or if you see Homeland, you know, you see the CIA lead there, I forget the gentleman's name. Uh, and so you wanted to be, have that kind of gravitas, whereas this looked more tilting towards Jim Carrey-ish. Uh, I mean, no disrespect, Jim Carrey is a great actor, great acting ability. But the facial expressions somewhere betrayed the gravity of the moment. Um, and so that's, that, that is from the acting standpoint that I can share. Finally, to sum up, like act one, act two seem like Act one is like a the Kufia the thriller. Act two is like Kufia the internal conflict. Act three is like the caricaturishness of it all, drama mixed mixed noodles. So the, the climax became so silly that otherwise an intelligent movie should have in, ended intelligently, which it clearly did not. Right? The dinner sequence was absolute throw off. I mean, when you exit a movie. You remember the good parts, but the bad parts stick out. And then you, when you assess it, the human tendency is to assess it basis the amount of bad part. If you have less amount of bad part, you call it a great movie. If the amount of bad part is more, then you call it a bad movie. That, that's general human tendency, right? As much as we want to appreciate the good work done, the ones that stand out from a jar jarring standpoint, those are the ones that retain in your memory. So yeah, Act 3 did not work for me at all. It was completely half-baked, undercooked, not completely fleshed out. And it didn't add to the memorableness of the movie. So when I sum this up move for you, uh, will I watch it? Would I recommend it? Yeah, being a, a Vishal Bhardwaj fan, absolutely. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, is it something that I will remember for a long time, Rewatch it? Answer is no. Uh, could it have been better? Answer is yes. Uh, and so I leave it to you, uh, audiences who have uh, yet to see or who have seen it and love to hear some of your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. These are good conversations to have. It's not trying to be unnecessarily critical. It's like trying to give as objective as possible from a artistic creative standpoint, which itself is an oxymoron, if you will, that how can you be so objective about artistic? Either it moves you or you it doesn't. And so keep all those disclaimers aside. That was my fair, objective, neutral assessment of uh, Netflix's Kufia. Hope you liked this kind of straight talk, no frill, no mumbo jumbo assessment. It's not giving away everything, I hope. Uh, and if you do, please let me know. I'd love to cover uh, some more movies in such granular detail. If there are recommendations, suggestions, do let me know. And if any of the Netflix folks or 
Kufia team or Mr. Bhardwaj is watching this review. Thank you for, um, you know, at least giving us movies which are something that I would want to invest time, given that the disposable time is so much lesser these days. I would probably, you know, take time off to watch your movies and I look forward to some of your upcoming movies. Till we meet the next time, stay well, stay safe and keep watching Ionisms. This is your host, Ian, and I wish you a great week ahead. Cheers.